Hello everyone. Welcome to this introductory lecture on Python. So in this lecture I will introduce you with uh, the Python programming and show you some basic examples. Uh, this will be uh, overall what I will be covering in this uh, short tutorial. So we will talk about uh, some decision and control uh, loop in Python. We will look at some basic data types in Python. We will look at how you can define a function or a class in Python and also how you can uh, write and read from files in, in Python. So Python was introduced in the 1990s so it's quite a while when the Python was introduced by uh, Guido van Rossum. You, when you write your Python code, usually you save it as a .py extension. And Python is a very high level language, uh, which is also a general purpose uh, programming language. So what I mean by high level is uh, the way or the language you use to uh, code uh, in Python is very similar to what we uh, what we use you in our daily life. So the vocabulary is uh, close to our, our language or the language we speak. Uh, there are many reasons that uh, Python why Python is uh, so popular. And first and foremost is uh, it's very simple and easy to learn. Obviously, it's also uh, free and open source, so anyone can uh, get the Python and free and start programming. It's a high-level language, as I mentioned. And another benefit of uh, Python is that it's a portable, so you can write your program in a Mac or in a Windows, and you can execute that program in a Linux machine, for example. Due to this... Uh, many good benefits. There are uh, big players in the IT domain or in this, uh, in this era of uh, massive scale computing like Google, NASA, Facebook, Yahoo, YouTube, Netflix, all are using Python because it's also a uh, popular language among the service providers. So to get started with Python, you need to have uh, at least the latest version of the, uh, of the Python downloaded and installed in your machine. Then you can use any other text editor or IDE to uh, write and execute Python code. But for this tutorial, I will be using a Jupyter Notebook, uh, which you can download from this link anaconda that uh, anaconda.com slash distribution and then you can uh, install the anaconda I already installed it on my machine and now I will uh, start it so when you install an anaconda uh, and launch the anaconda navigator you will see a number of uh, applications that you can use there are many uh, very useful, um, some of the useful applications, but we will use this uh, Jupyter Notebook. So you launch this one. And as soon as you launch the Jupyter Notebook, you will see a client uh, browser uh, uh, in your local host that started. And all you need to do is uh, just uh, click on new and then Python 3 notebook. So now you got an actual environment where you can start programming. So just to test if my uh, environment is uh, up and running. For example, I want to add two numbers. So this is my input line 
where I'm providing the code or any instructions. And as soon as I either hit the run button or, or uh, this run button, it will show me the output of that instruction. So two plus three is obviously five. In this way, you, you can prov directly provide any instructions that will be regarded as a Python command. But you can also write some basic Python commands in your input line. For example, if I want to print a message, I have to use a print command. And within this print command, I will give the message that I want to show. For example, the first message is the hello world and when I run it, it will show me the output. So this is uh, the basic uh, print message or uh, print command that we will use uh, frequently. Also in your uh, projects and so on. Python can be can be uh, useful when you need also variables so you know what is the variable right so a variable is a placeholder or some names in which or to which you can assign some values it can be a numeric value it can be a string value or so on so for example i have this variable called age and let's say I assigned, I have assigned this uh, 40 to this age, uh, age variable. And then the value of 40 is not yet assigned to age. So I have to execute these instructions or this comma, uh, this uh, code. So as soon as I hit the run, uh, the age of uh, the age variable got this value 40. So now if you write, uh, type age and hit the run button, you can see that uh, you will get the value as 40. In the same way, you can print the age as like this. So you write the print command and then you type age within the bracket it will give you the same value. In this case, you are not using uh, the inverted comma because if you use the inverted comma, it will be regarded as a string. And if you write in this way, it will simply give you the string. So it's not the right answer. What's correct is uh, this. In the same way, we can also assign uh, strings to variables. For example, I can assign a variable, call, uh, I can create a variable called name and assign a string value to that name. So now the name variable will hold the value called uh, David. So if I print the name variable, it will give me David right until now you assigned uh, values to variables for example this is a number which is uh, a, an integer number so it does not have any fraction this is a string it is basically an alphabetical uh, value it is not a numeric that was assigned to another variables and then you can also uh, assign uh, for example fraction number so let's say the salary of David is uh, five thousand ninety five dollar so so five thousand dollar and ninety five cents so now if we execute this uh, our salary will be the value of the salary variable will be uh, this uh, fraction number or uh, floating number
one thing that we can also do uh, we can can not only print our variables we can add some customized uh, text uh, uh, along with our variables for example uh, let's say we can say uh, his name is uh, then plus sign is uh, name and and David or name is forty years old. So now if I print this or I can say even my name is David and I am so we can say my name is David and I am 40 years old so if I run this uh, code as you can see it's giving me an error so why it's giving me an error it can say, it says that I cannot I can only cons concatenate string to string not integer to string so the reason behind is that this name variable was a string right so I am concatenating string to string but then this age variable this was an integer it was not a string so it was a numeric value and I am concatenating this numeric value uh, it with here, one string here and another string there to resolve this issue what we can do uh, we can convert this age value or this age uh, numeric uh, variable to a string value so we simply add a string method or function which will convert our uh, age variable uh, or the value of age variable to a string one so if I now run it you can see it says my name is David and I am 40 years old so in this way we can assign values to variables we can print customize messages along with our variables and we can concatenate multiple variables to uh, into a one statement right uh, there are many uh, python keywords uh, maybe we will use uh, we will show some of the keywords in this uh, tutorial uh, for example if we are going to use a loop uh, a loop is a command that will iterate some of the statements or code under that loop so for example we have while loop we have for loop and so on and another thing that I can also mention when we are giving in the name of a variable there are some rules for giving the names for example uh, you cannot use any special characters with your names so let's say uh, we define a new variable called uh, address and the address let's say is a string variable uh, Kalmar Sweden but if this address variable has a let's say dollar sign in it 
or any other symbols in it let's say hashtag uh, hashtag definitely is not working so let's say it has a M person you will see uh, it will not work because we provided the wrong name for the variable or in this case the name of the identifier and even if we give a variable name with a exclamation sign let's say it will give the, us the same error because it says invalid syntax so one exception is that you can have underscore as your variable name or as an identifier so now if i run this it's a success because you can add underscore to anywhere to any places within that fair or for the variable names so now if i print this value uh, it will print me the address or correct value of the variable and another thing that's as, as i mentioned there are many uh, keywords or tokens uh, in uh, python for example if you are using the loop there is a while loop or for loop so uh, if i want to use while as a variable name uh, let's say uh, i can give any name to any uh, name to the any value to this variable it will also not work because it will say that invalid syntax because you cannot use python tokens or identifiers as a variable name and as you can see also usually uh, python tokens or identifiers that are specific to python are highlighted in a bold green so when it's highlighted as a bold green that means you cannot use it as a variable name or as an identifier another uh, rule is that python is case sensitive so here i had this address variable but if i take the same address variable with a bigger uh, capital a in the beginning and assign to this uh, let's say another address uh, toronto canada and run this now i have although they look similar but since i have uh, small letter here and capital letter here the the values will be not the same so now if i print the other value it will still give me the previous address so what i wanted to say here is python is case sensitive so uh, two names with different cases represent uh, different variables or can represent different variables another one last rule is that although uh, as i say this is an identifier or this is a variable name they can start with the underscore and usually uh, we don't put underscore in the beginning maybe in the middle but this underscore can be at any position for example i can have the same variable address but having the underscore in the beginning and i can uh, assign a value to it so if i run it it will run successfully because as i said the, the rule says you can have underscores even in the beginning and now you know if i want to print it i get the correct value but one exception to that is you can have a variable that has uh, digits in the middle right and then you can assign a, a value to it it will run successfully and if you print the value it will show that it's lunt but if you have the same digits 
in front of the variable it will not allow you uh, to uh, do this so now it will say that there is a invalid syntax because you can use digits in mean in the middle of the uh, variables or identifier names but not in front of and again uh, as you can see they, they they get different colors when you use them in in the beginning of an identifier name so these are the basic rules for uh, name, rena naming your variables or identifiers which will be useful also for your python programming Uh, there are many uh, Python operators also. Uh, in general, uh, we use arithmetic operators, assignment operators, comparison operators, and then there are logical operators. For example, uh, arithmetic operators are simply uh, if we want to perform some operations, let's say 7 minus 2, it, it's a arithmetic operation. Uh, you can also perform some assignment. Uh, assignment. So we used here the equal sign. This is basically an assignment operator. Uh, operator. Uh, so for example, I assign and a value to A that is a equals to 10 so using this equal operator or assignment operator we are giving this value of 10 to a then there is other assignment operators also so for example a plus equals to 10 so this assignment operator what it will do is add 10 to this uh, to the value of uh, a and then assign to it so we had this value of a as 10 so if we run this one we see a equals to 10 now if we run this one you will see that the value of a will be 20 so now if i run uh, print the value of a it will give me 20. So similarly, there are other assignment operators like a minus equals to 10. So now it will be, it will come back to 10 because the current value of 10 uh, a was 20. And now we are uh, subtracting 10 from 20 and then assigning to a. So if I run this one uh, and then print the value of a, it will give me 10 back, uh, 10 again. So these are known as assignment operators. And then there are also comparison operators. So we want to check, for example, uh, let's say we have a variable called uh, B and we assign the value or a, any random value, uh, for example, seven. And we want to check if A is equals to B. And if we do that, it will give me a false because a was uh, 10 and uh, b was 7 but if we do another test if a b not equals to uh, a if a not equals to b then it will give me true because a and b are not equal so this is true so in this way we can do other comparisons like less than or, or, or greater than. Uh, for example, we can write if uh, uh, a greater than b and then, sorry, it should be like this and then print a is higher and then else print uh, b is higher so now if we run this 
we can see that a is higher because the value of a was 10 and the value of b was uh, 7. So in the output is a is higher because it checks this uh, comparison and since this is true it goes into this block and uh, it prints this one. If this was the other case then it will go in the else block and print b is higher. So as you can see. One thing to uh, notice here is that how I wrote these multiple lines of code in Python. In particular uh, this print code or print statement belongs to uh, or uh, it belongs to this if condition. So any, any code that part of another block will be always written uh, using a tab. So we have a tab here. So Python follows this strictly that multiple uh, blocks of code that are under uh, um, that should be considered under a, under a single module or under one block should be written using same number of tabs. So in this case one. And if I edit another um, statement here uh, and let's say a is higher and b is lower. So in this case when this will be true it will execute all those statements because Python automatically considered them under the same block and that's why they have also one tabbing. So let's see if I run this as you can see uh, both of these statements got executed. So this is another basic uh, code writing practices in Python. So when we are talking about data types, we already saw uh, numeric data types. We also saw string data types. So this is an example of a string. Uh, this is an example of a numeric or integer. Uh, then we also saw an example of floating point data type, which, ha which has some uh, decimal points or fractional values but apart from that there are other high level uh, python data types so they are uh, known as numeric data type uh, boolean data type sequence type and dictionary so all these integer floating and other uh, numeric types are ov obviously under the numeric type. Then we have boolean types. Usually booleans are always true or false. We also have sequence type. So sequence type are string, list, tuple and set. For example we have this uh, variable here which is a string type but this is basically a sequence of characters right or a sequence of uh, letters. That's why this is sequence type. But this can be not only a sequence of letters or characters, it can be a sequence of string also. So we might have a list that have multiple strings. And that's uh, also handy when you are writing code in Python. And then there is uh, the dictionary, which is uh, a kind of key value pair, uh, which is also useful uh, in some scenarios. So in the next few examples, I will show some of the uh, common Python data types. And some of the data types are immutable or, uh, or mutable. So immutable means once you uh, assign a, a value to the variable, you cannot change uh, uh, this string or these uh, characters. It's the same for uh, it's the same for numbers. So once you assign 40 to this variable age, 
you cannot change this 4 or you cannot change this uh, 0 to it. But there are some data types that are mutable, for example, list, dictionaries and sets. So in other words, if you have a list of string, let's say you have a, a list of cities, in that list you can either add a new list or delete an existing, li existing list, a existing city from the list. So we will also see some kind of examples for those. So first of all, the numeric data types. So let's say we have a uh, variable uh, name and uh, a and we assign a value of 21. We have another variable b which uh, we have assigned uh, another value. So now we have two numeric variables, uh, 21 and uh, 21 assigned to a, a and 5 assigned to B. What we can do, we can play with some mathematical operations like we can print the addition of A and B, we can print the subtraction value, we can print the multiplication value, uh, we can print the division value, we can print uh, the reminder value, uh, we can also print what is the power a to the power b, right? So if we print it, it will show you that 21 plus 5 is 26, uh, 21 minus 5 is 16, 21 mu multiplication is 105, uh, 21 dividing 5 is uh, 4.2 and the reminder is 1 and if, we, if you compute 21 uh, times 5 it will give you this value. So these are basic uh, mathematical operations using uh, some numeric and data types. There are other useful functions that you can use also in Python and you can use them using some built-in functions for numeric values. For example, I can have a variable uh, let's say a negative variable, a, neg a, a negative uh, value is assigned to that variable. So the value of A is now, uh, so the value of A is now minus 12.21. And let's say we have another variable but this time instead of defining a numeric value we defined it as a string but inside inside the string we have this uh, numeric value but we want to get the numeric value out of it and we can definitely do that and if you print b it will give you a string value so as you can see this is a string and this is a numeric data, numeric value. So now if, we, if you want to print the values, let's say the value of A, it was originally a negative value, right? And it was a negative uh, floating point value. But we want the integer value out of that. We can obviously do that. So you can use simply int a. So it will give you uh, only uh, this value out of uh, the whole value. And then we can also, uh, what we can do, this b, it was a string variable, right? But we want this numeric value out of it. So and as you can see this is a floating data floating point 
uh, type of numeric value. So definitely, if we want to get the floating point data, we simply uh, write, use this function float. But if we use uh, the integer of b, it will all it will only give you uh, this two. And another thing you can do is out of those uh, floating point number, you can cut the uh, uh, decimal points. For example, we can use the round function. So round of A will be the closest uh, integer value of 12.21. But there is a slight difference between round of A and integer of A. Integer of A, uh, no matter what, you will get only this part. But round of A gives you, uh, if there was, if it was 12.6 or 12.7, let's say, it will give you 13. Uh, in that in that way and you can also get the positive value out of this negative uh, value from the variable a and to do that you simply use uh, apps function so abs it will give you 12.21 instead of a negative 12.21 uh, so now if i run this again as you can see it gives me an error it comes from this part uh, because it cannot convert this uh, uh, floating point uh, string to an integer because it was a floating so what we need to do we need to use this function first floating and then if we want to have the integer value uh, then it, it can get the integer. Uh, for, so for now, for this example purpose, maybe I want to see the both value. So if I run this float of B, it will give me 2.25. And then out of those 2.25, if I add another integer command, it will give me two. So if I run this now, as you can see, uh, the original value of a was minus 12.21 then if i get the integer of a it gives only the integer part by discarding the fraction part and once i ran integer of float of b that means first i convert this in, uh, string value to a float and then i convert this to a integer so i get only two and then this is the same from the previous example. If I round it, it gives me minus 12 again. So in this case, round of A and integer of A is the same because the decimal point here is uh, less than 0.5. If it was uh, higher than 0.5 or equal to 0.5, it would be 13. And then the absolute value of A is 12.21 uh, because it uh, discard this negative sign so these are some of the functions that you can use uh, if you want to play with uh, numeric data or string data or floating point data and want to convert uh, from one to another now let's uh, move on to some functions related to the string so let's say I have this uh, variable uh, string uh, A where I assign congratulations. So one thing you might uh, think about is like here we already assigned a, a value to A. Now we are assigning again. Uh, 
another string value to a so what will happen so this is another uh, benefit of python so the type of the variables are, deter are determined at runtime so you can change the type of variable anytime in the in the coding so before it was uh, uh, a numeric type so if you type here type of a it will show you uh, a floating to floating point data a floating point data is also a numeric type but once you run this code and now if you type thus if you run this one or if you if i copy paste it and run the type now it see the type of uh, variable a got changed to a string so this is also very uh, useful uh, you know, feature for python so going back to the example let's say we have this uh, variable a with the string congratulations and another variable b with uh, another string so what we can do we can do multiple things out of those two string so one is we can concatenate these two strings so now it's not the same as numeric operator or numeric uh, or mathematical operator where we uh, using this addition sign we could add two numbers that we did earlier here in this case if we add this uh, concatenation sign or addition sign it will simply join this to a string and then what we can do also uh, let's say we have this uh, variable with the value grateful and if we do it like this it will simply print the va variable v twice and then what we can do also we can get an index uh, character or letter from a string if you remember we already mentioned that string variables are immutable you can access each of the uh, string uh, each of the letters in the string but you cannot modify them so let's say i want to get the fifth index of this variable a so what it will uh, print is uh, it will print uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 uh, sorry i want the 5 fifth index so uh, 0 1 2 3 4 fifth so it will print a out of this and then we can also print a range of characters so let's say we want to print uh, the letters or characters from 0 until the 7th so it was until 5 though 6 7th so it will print this this character this string or sub string so it will start from 0 and then take seven uh, characters so uh, 0 and then 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay sorry it will print until congrat and we can also check for example if one string is in another string or in other words if uh, b is part of a so in that uh, we can do that in this way if simply if b is b in a and we can also do the other way the uh, opposite one b not in a so in this case 
it will check in the first case if grateful is in this uh, is this part uh, is, is part of this string and then in the second case it will check if grateful is not part of this string so now if i uh, run this one uh, you can see a plus b is simply the concatenation of these two strings b b multiply 2 it printed b twice a of 5 so it it printed the letter in the fifth index of variable a a from 0 to 7 so it started from 0 and then printed seven characters b in a so grateful is not in con uh, congratulations so it's false b not in a grateful is not in congratulations so this one is true but if we change the string let's say uh, we also added grateful to a and if i run this again then the things got uh, some of the things got changed because now b in a so it became true and b not in a became false because it's the other way So these are some of the basic string operations that you might need also when you are playing with the variables or data types. There are some other uh, built-in uh, methods also for the string that are also uh, very useful. For example, uh, if I want to use the same string here a and b and for example i can simply take the variable a and then can write capitalize so what it will do it will capitalize the whole uh, whole value of a i can also So it will, it will basically capitalize the first character. I can also make uh, A all as all uppercase. I can also make A as uh, title case. I can uh, search a string in another string so for example i can search in the b in a and in this case this this function or this command is same as this one and also what i can do i can count how many times uh, B uh, exist in A. So A dot count and then B. So I'm counting the number uh, occurrences of B in A. Then I can also check if an string is an alphabetic. So is alpha alpha if it's a completely alphabetic string it will send uh, it will give me true i can also check if this string is uh, is is has uh, it has any digits so is digit so in this case it will f give us false we can also check if uh, if a variable or a string is a lowercase uh, the value of a variable is lowercase or not we can also check other other conditions like if if the variable if the value of a variable is uppercase and so on so it should be is upper so in this way there are many useful functions that we can use and if I run this one 
you can see it capitalized the A. So capitalize means it only add the capital letter for the first word and then make everything small. Uh, that's also usually do with what we do for sentences in English. It makes everything uppercase. So it, be uh, it became everything uppercase. It makes the title case. So if we had multiple word in this string, what it, it would do basically, uh, it for all the words, it would uh, add the first letter as a capital one. For example, if I make this change here, uh, so uh, <laughs> then it will be congratulate, uh, congratulations, space, grateful but g would be in a capital form so if i run this one now as you can see the results got changed and then uh, we are finding the b in a uh, it, it did not uh, find because uh, b was uh, with a upper g but it was with a small g so if we change it change it back to a capital g it will the result will also change now so if i execute this one it found 16 because b started at the 16th index of uh, a so in this way we can also uh, conclude that B exists in A. So in this case, B in A. So if the value of this uh, command is greater than zero, that means B in A. And then this value shows at which index uh, B started in A. A count B, so it's checking the number of times b appeared in a so it was in this case it was only one if b is alphanumeric yes b is completely alphanumeric it does not have any digit if it it if b is is digit is not is digit there is no digit there so it's false if b is is in lowercase it's also false because we have a g there and then if b is uppercase it's also false because we also have both lowercase and uppercase there mixed. So these are some of the useful uh, string functions that you can you can use in Python. We can also do some string formatting, and there are these are also um, suitable for the variables in Python. So for example, by string uh, string formatting. What I mean is you have a variable called uh, David, which has a value called uh, David. His age is, let's say, 35. And what you can do, <coughs> sorry, you can create a customized message is that my name is and there will be a placeholder so for now I let's let's make it uh, like this so my name is David and I am uh, 35 years old so what I can do I can put these variables into my string so that when I print this message it will automatically uh, get the var uh, values of the variables and put them into their corresponding placeholders. So in this case if I add this name and age what I also need to do and this name is a string, right? So it should be a percentage string. 
and then this age is a num numeric so percentage d so now if i print this message it will take these variables and simply put the values in a sequential order so name in percentage s and age in percentage d so if i run this one it will say my name is david i am 35 years old but uh, what you can do also you can uh, Or, uh, organize or make some sequence out of those uh, uh, strings so for example let me uh, give you an example so we have this uh, same variable name and and David uh, name as David and age as 35 and we want to print the same message but this time let's say I uh, I just put the variables in any order I want but what I need to do is uh, dot format and uh, here i need to put these variables uh, these brackets so yeah and in this place we need the name right but the name is in in another order now so basically this is this age is in the zero index and this name is in uh, one index so i should have one here and zero here and if i print this now it will sh uh, sh uh, show me the results but the correct results but if i what uh, if i would do the other way let's say i have the same uh, name here and uh, age here and i print it i could get uh, basically wrong output so what i wanted to say here is uh, you can control uh, the placeholder or the sequence of strings in in your uh, customized output using this kind of uh, numbers so you just mention which variable index you want at this place so i was talking about different types of uh, data types uh, in python and for example i mentioned there is a string there is a uh, so sequence type so for the sequence type we have strings we have list we have tuples and sets and so on so i will show you some of the examples for uh, list sets and tuples uh, a list is simply a a collection of items it can be a string items it can be a integer items or numeric items and so on so let's say we have three strings elenium uh, kalmar and sweden so if i run it i have this list uh, variable that is basically a, a a type of list and if i run this command it will give me all the items of this list the interesting thing here is the list is uh, written using these uh, square brackets op opening and closing and then uh, separated by commas so this is how you 
identify if it's a list or set or tuples or so on and then we also have some functions or some uh, built-in functions for list same as we did for strings uh, by which you can um, control or manipulate the list items remember as we also mentioned that list is a mutable data type so you can change the items in the list so for example we can take the same list as names and some of the useful functions include the most basic ones is the length so you can check the length or how many items you have in your list so it will give you basically uh, three here then you can also add to your list so if you want to add to your list then you type names dot append let's say uh, you you just add uh, english so if you execute this command then your list will be extended uh, so right now it's just returned uh, none because usually uh, this append method uh, does not give you the output of uh, of the operation it simply says okay i have nothing to say but the operation got successfully executed but since you got the len uh, length of the item uh, of the uh, the list which was three and then you added so basically now it should be print the new length of the variables as four so now it's it was four then you added the english and again and the uh, new length became four so you started with four then added another item to the list and the new length became five one thing interesting thing here is as you already might notice that you can add uh, duplicate items in the list so i i have basically uh, english twice so if you print the english uh, names you can see uh, it you have duplicate english which is not the case for for example for the set data types uh, then going back to our methods for example uh, we, we, we don't want to append anymore the english you can uh, let's say names then insert Uh, we can add this one and close the bracket so then there is a little bit difference between append and insert so appending is uh, if we doing the append it also add the string to uh, the list but if we also insert it will also add it to the list but in this case, if, were, if we are going to use the insert method, it will fail. And I will tell you why it fails. Because you need two arguments for this method. And one of the argument is the placement. So let's say I want this Swedish, uh, this string to be inserted at the second place. And now if you run this, uh, second means basically 0, 1, 2. Second, uh, so this is the index. So Swedish was uh, okay, so it, it did not okay, 0, 1, 2. Uh, so it, ins it got inserted in the 
second index of the in the list and in this way using this insert method you can control basically at which position you want to insert the string and then i don't want to do, do the same insert again let's uh, move for another function and let's say you want to do, uh, remove one of the duplicate items that we had let's say in this case the english and what we can do we can simply say remove uh, names dot remove and english so what it will do uh, if i print again it removes the last occurrence of english so as i as as you remember we mentioned uh, list can have duplicate items or duplicate uh, members in the list so when we are deleting one item uh, or one value it's the value that was most recently added to the list so when we remove the english our second english got deleted now if we want to remove again the english it, it will delete this english but we don't want to delete that list in python is kind of a stack so in in a stack whatever items you put first goes to the bottom and then whatever items you uh, put last is on the top so let's say it's kind of a, a a set of plates so you have one two three four five plates and first you in added these three plates and then you added sweden uh, so basically you, you added lineo lnu kalmar and sweden then you added swedish in in the second index and then you also added english so now english is top of your stack of your plates right so if we want to get the last item in your stack or in your list in this case it will give you english because it was on the top so this was about a list and then another sequence type was the tuple and there are some key differences between uh, list and tuple one of the key differences that tuple is defined as uh, within first bracket and then the remaining are same in terms of definitions so now this name is a tuple so if you type want to see the type of the names it says tuple but in this case if i change uh, execute that one and now if i uh, want to see that uh, type of the names after executing uh, this one it will say that it's list but now since we are in the exa examples of tuples i want names to be tuple so there are other um, built-in functions for tuple or tuples also let's say uh, if this was not names it if this was a salary and then we had numeric values uh, 100 110 120 and so on uh, 118 so what we could do uh, using other functions for example we could simply again uh, see uh, the size of the tuple so in this case it would print uh, four then we could get the minimum of the tuple in this case it would print 100 and in this way we can we could also print 
the maximum of the salary and in this case 120 so these are some basic uh, functions for tuples and then we also have set and one of the difference between set and and a list is that in set you cannot have uh, duplicate values so and set is also an unordered collection of unique data items separated by comma but uh, um, uh, in, in list the items are listed is using square brackets in tuples items are enlisted using uh, first bracket but in set items are in, uh, listed using curly braces so this is one of the difference with other and data types there are multiple uh, operations also uh, that you can perform on the list including union intersection difference and symmetric difference we can show some of the examples so if we have for example let's say uh, this location variable and then we can also have this uh, order variable and let's say we had we made an order uh, for pycom and then uh, fipy and then uh, antenna and then let's say the price uh, the price was uh, it could it, it couldn't be um, let's say 50 euro so now we have this location and order date uh, order set and we want to print the union of this between two sets so the location union order it will uh, basically joins the two set we can also print location intersection that is and order so it will basically get a null set because there is no intersection between these two sets so it's a empty set but if we add this LNU in this list LNU then it will give uh, LNU sorry uh, to change the variable because the variable got changed so it gives the LNU and then uh, we can also get the difference so location uh, minus difference so it gives Sweden and Kalmar so out of these three items in this set uh, it's uh, so from these three items it's uh, subtracting all the items that are in order so it's subtracting LNU these are definitely not there so if I subtract LNU from this list we have Kalmar and Sweden and we can also do symmetric difference so location and uh, order no it should be order so symmetric difference is basically uh, all the items that are uncommon between these two list so we have also other functions for set some useful functions for example we can add items to set we can update uh, uh, an item in the set we can also uh, discard some of the items from set for example 
we have this uh, location set so I'm just taking the same set again and we can uh, okay print we can add a item to the set so let's say um, again English and then if we want to print the set let's say if we want to print the new set uh, now we have the English in our set and then let's say we can also uh, update the set so location dot update uh, let's say uh, we want to update the LNU with LNU and then we can print the location again okay so I think there was a syntax error so basically we are adding this list to this set what I wanted to do is basically uh, update this set with this uh, with this new uh, new list uh, so the, due to the syntax error it uh, added individual items uh, that I did not want it to add so maybe let me uh, run this or refresh this variable again so location and now I want to uh, add uh, new items uh, from a list to this set so that's why I had this uh, square brackets and in this way I can add a list or, or a tuple to a set and then we have one more uh, data types that is also very common in Python that is the dictionary and probably that's the most interesting data types let's say we have uh, a variable called capitals and uh, dictionary is also is defined is using curly braces and the capital of Norway is uh, Oslo then comma capital of uh, France is uh, Paris and capital of Sweden is Stockholm So this is our dictionary and if you want to print uh, the dictionary you can see uh, this is our dictionary and type of capitals will also be the dict type and if I want to get an items from the dictionary basically what we need to do is uh, we need to get the dictionary name first and get use the get function and what is the capital of Fra Sweden so if I so in this case in this dictionary Norway is the key and Oslo is the value France is the key Paris is the value so it's a key value pair uh, which it can be a numeric value it can be a numeric key and so on but it should be always a key value pair separated by this semicolon uh, sorry colon so if I want to get the capital of Sweden so Sweden here is the key and it will print basically the Stockholm and
we can what we can also do is uh, to print each of the key value uh, from this dictionary and for that one for the first time we will be using the loop and as I mentioned loop is used to iterate over a, a list of items so here our capitals is a list of key value pairs so for each key in capitals so we have uh, our capitals has three key Norway France and Sweden so for each key print first we want to print the capital that is the country and then we want to print their corresponding values so capitals capitals and then the key so now it will print Norway Oslo France Paris and Sweden Stockholm like this this same thing can be done using this command so if, if we take exactly the same code and instead of capitals within square brackets key we could get we could do what we could do is capital get and then key like this so this is equivalent to uh, capital square brackets key There are some uh, also built-in functions that are useful for uh, the dictionary. For example, if we use the same variable there and we want to uh, print the size of our dictionary, then we can simply print len of capitals that we had, we had uh, three members in our dictionary that you have this capitals uh, the uh, dictionary and you can you want to get the items so it will simply uh, print all the items for you as a key value pair so if you don't want to get all the items you want to get only the keys so you can simply type capitals and then keys so it will only print the keys so our keys was Norway France and Sweden and in this way you can also get only the values so in this case our values were Oslo Paris and Stockholm so these are some of the useful functions you can also update uh, using uh, the update function uh, in a key value um, using a key value pair so now uh, coming back to one of the more important in interesting and important part of the Python or in any programming is like decision control and by decision control we mean uh, conditions so in general we use if conditions and the way we write is let's say we have two variables a equals to 15 and b equals to 12 so just checking if a and b got their value so a and b got their value and now we want to uh, write the if condition i think i already showed an example of if, if condition so if a is greater than b so this is the structure of writing an if condition so if and then a space and then the actual condition 
and then a, a semicolon. And anything un under if will be followed by a tab. So you, should, or you must have a tab if you have statements under if. So let's say in this case, uh, if A is greater than B, we can say A is uh, max and uh, we can also say B is min. Let's say we might have another condition uh, for this same pair of values and for that one we have to use else if in short it's written l if so l if b is uh, greater than a uh, then we can print b is max and we can also print a is min but what if a is not greater than b or b is not greater than a it can be possible that they are equal right then we can say else this is the final final block uh, what we can say is a and b are equal so now if we run this we will see the first if condition will be will true so it will print uh, a is max and b is min but if we change the value it will go to the second if condition so now if i run this it is printing b is max and a is min again if i change the value and make them equal it will go to the sorry it will go to the third block and say a and b are equal so this is a very simple and a classical way of writing if conditions of course you can add uh, multiple uh, conditions under the same if here for example if a is, in, is greater than b and uh, b is uh, greater than c and in this case let's say you have another variable uh, called c that is uh, 25 let's say this is 20 uh, this is 20 let's say. and if a is greater than b and b is greater than c that means a is max out of these three right else if b is greater than a and, a and uh, b is greater than c also then b is max else uh, c is max Let's say we are finding the maximum value out of this three. So now if we print this, uh, get this value into variables and definitely C is max. That means uh, the first two conditions will fail and that's why this else condition will be true. Here again, as you can see, uh, we got this syntax error because it should be one and not two and so c is max and i made this error uh, intentionally just to uh, make you aware that when you are joining uh, this if conditions and when you have multiple conditions under the same if condition you have to use only one m percent not two some 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 languages have this for example and but in python you simply use one uh, a person so if you use here one and 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 try to run it 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 will still execute but i would recommend to use simply as and
So this was the if condition and now let's go back to another important uh, part of Python that is loop and one of the two common loops are while loop and for loop. So let's say uh, so basically the, uh, the syntax of the while loop is like this while there will be some conditions and this there will be a, this colon also semicolon and then you will have statements and so on so inside while you might have also other if conditions and so on so at the end when you come up out of the loop you go back to your initial indentation and uh, print something else or, or, or do something else. So this is the structure of while loop and usually while loop always starts with a condition checking which is uh, not the case for for loop. Uh, let's uh, give you a small example using while loop so let's say we have a variable uh, called num we all have another variable uh, called count we have another variable called total so the goal is it will take an input from the user let's say a number and then uh, print the uh, the total uh, starting from 1 up to that number so uh, it will take the from the user this num value then it will uh, it will iterate using this uh, while loop and finally it will save that value to the total and print this value so to do that while uh, the num value should be always a positive one so it should be either one uh, uh, zero or greater so the value of the num will be received from the users and it will be an integer number definitely so to get the value from the user we can use this uh, function called input and let's say we can ask enter a the user enter a number this message and uh, user will en enter a number and if this number is greater than zero then uh, <coughs> what we have also can do uh, maybe I can slightly change the example so we will take from the users a list of numbers and then just sum up those list of numbers instead of uh, asking user to give only one input so that's why our input function is inside the while loop and we can say also to the user that uh, enter uh, zero to exit so when the user will put zero that means the user input is finished and it will print the output and this will also count how many input the user provided and calculate the total of the numbers and finally uh,
it will print how many uh, inputs sorry it should not be in the bracket how many input and what was the total uh, of that input and let's say what was the um, what is the average also we can print the average of the numbers that user entered so what it will do uh, it will continue the loop as long as the user provide a zero and when user uh, provides a zero it will exit the loop right so let's uh, run this program uh, two three five seven eight one zero so when I entered zero it did not stop why because I added this equal sign here so the loop will continue as long as the num is greater than uh, zero if it's equal to zero it will still continue so I run this part again okay I think uh, the other module did not finish so okay Uh, okay it, it the count was zero so num was also zero so maybe what I can do is uh, start from the counter one so now it should work so I will continue the numbers and as soon as the user put zero it get out of the loop so i got seven numbers uh, total was 24 and this was the average so this is one example of how you can write a simple while loop so while space a condition and then semicolon and then the rest will follow i will not go with the example of uh, the for loop i will just give you the format here so the for loop will look like this for x in uh, let's say x and then you do whatever you want so let's say print something so in this case in this example basically this larger x it can be a list it can be a uh, set it can be a dictionary it can be a tuple and so on so let's say it can be a simple list uh, of items like this and when you are printing uh, when you are iterating over this list basically this small x represents each of the item in in the larger x so if you simply print x it will print all these numbers so if i execute this as you can see one two three and five so this is the very basic uh, structure of uh, for loop where you uh, write the keyword uh, for keyword in python then space then the variable name in this case this variable name represents each of the items in this uh, list in and then 
your main item uh, main list or set this uh, variables or this uh, items or list you can also have uh, you can uh, you can change them and you can have your own customized range for example uh, you can write for x in range uh, 1 to 10 in this case x is still the variable and it will get the value from 1 until 10 and sorry it's basically should be this first bracket and now if you print the x basically it will print from 1 to 10 again there was i think uh, it will be scholar more so it will print now 1 until 9 basically not 10 so when it's 10 it will uh, end up uh, it will finish the loop so there is a ch internally there is a check that if x is if x equals to 1 so this is the maximum limit and this is the minimum limit so if x is equal to 1 print x if x is to 2 print x if x is equal to 3 print x but before printing it's also internally checking if x is less than 10 so this is the maximum limit so it's checking if x equals to 2 and is it less than 10 yes then print x when it comes to 10 it says x equals to 10 if x is less than 10 no then it went out of the loop so it prints from 1 to 9 in this way you can uh, also loop through the dictionaries as i mentioned earlier and not only dictionaries you can loop through uh, tuples sets and so on so user defined functions until now we uh, showed a number of examples of uh, built-in functions but user defined functions can also uh, useful if you write, want to write your own function and the format of writing user defined function is definition so you always need to write def and then your function name let's say result and your user defined function can have parameters or values that you want to use inside that function let's say we have three uh, scores or let's say two scores so score one and score two you always need this semicolon and your total value is uh, score one plus score two and then you are checking if total is uh, greater than 50 i'm always writing in my java style conditions then you simply print pass else uh, simply print fail so let's say our result method takes uh, two input and add them and check if you have passed or failed based on the scores but we want to use that method also right that we defined and let's say we have uh, a course for called iot and we want to take input from the user for those course so we take input and score for iot this is uh, score one we might have another course let's say math 
and we can copy paste this score for math and then uh, we can call the method result method with IOT and math so here what we are doing we are calling that method that we defined here using these two numbers uh, these two scores on this uh, IOT course and math course so when we like write like this result IOT math what it will do it will go there and use this value of IOT and math for score one and score two and it simply prints if you pass or fail based on the scores that you provided as the input here so when you run it it asks for the co uh, score for your iot course and then for your uh, mathematics course and it says you have passed and if you take uh, the score for iot and in math you got 48 let's say and it uh, you are still pass because it's saying the total is greater than 50 but i want to see if the average is greater than 50 so for that one i just need to divide it by two and now if i give the same score again 40 and 48 it will say i failed because the average is not less than is not greater than 50. But what I wanted to show here is a, a basic definition of user-defined function. So you use the keyword def space function name and if you have any parameter list them here that you will use inside the function and then a semicolon at the end. And you just call this function or invoke this function in your program uh, using uh, this way now go back to the class that is another important uh, and useful feature for Python since Python is a also object, object oriented uh, programming language in Python class is defined using the keyword called class so let's say we have a person class so we write like this class space class name and then semicolon and let's say uh, we want to do something here and one of the thing is a class can have a method also so let's say uh, I want to display the info of that person so display info and uh, in the display info method I have to put a semicolon uh, I want to print the name and age and the question is where this name and age is coming from and the answer is so they should be coming from either from your main function or from the class itself and if you want to set it from the class itself then what you need to do is uh, have two more methods so you are setting the setting the name i will come to to another point soon and name equals to name and then you also need to define uh, get uh, set the age age 
h equals to h and now in your main method so you have this person right this is a class and we also mentioned that python is a object oriented language so we have to create an object of this class that is let's say person1 equals to person so it will create an object of that person class and assign this to p1 so this here is in this case p1 is also an variable but this is an object type variable so i want to set the name of that person so set name let's say it was i can send a string and p1 set age uh, let's say any age that i prefer 40 and then i have this method for this class like right? display info so this class should display my name and age when i call this method but if i run this now I was expecting that I will see my name and my age but it will not show up so there are multiple reasons why first of all when we are initializing initializing this class or creating this object this class is or this object is not initialized and each of the classes should always be initialized using this init method in other words or in object oriented programming this is known as constructor and this constructor or this class has a has two variables right okay let me do it like this so two variables name and age age i don't know it can be uh, zero for now and name just to initialize i say none but this will still not work as you can see it still has the problem and the problem comes here is because uh, when I'm, I'm initializing and when I'm getting assigning the values there should be an object for that class and this that object is the self object basically this when I use the self dot name or self dot object age it will always refer to the name variable and age variable for that class so for all the cases even if i am displaying the info i should pass this object as a parameter to this uh, method so it knows that this age and this name are the variables of this self object and when i'm also setting the names and the age i should also pass the object from which it will get uh, the name and age and this is setting the name and age also to the self object or to the uh, variables that are that are that are in that object so in that case initially when i'm creating the object here it was assigned zero and none but now after calling this method sorry set name and set age it will uh, overwrite this value with this francis and 40 and interestingly you will see that now everything will work so when i am displaying the info the age of uh, the, the name was set as francis and the age was set as 40 uh, i don't know why in this case 
it was okay so it should be basically not a string it should be an integer so that's why uh, age is still showing 35 maybe I had uh, age variables before uh, that was set as 35 so it is still getting the same variable name but it should add uh, the age for this object I also initialized here okay okay let me stop the kernel and run it again okay but it's still for showing for uh, 35 so perhaps I had 35 before somewhere as age yes so it's it was getting uh, is still getting this value but um, maybe the constructor is not uh, setting up set age oh, okay so that was the issue so I should have set the age here uh, now it should say f set 40 yeah sometimes this is small errors uh, make your life uh, difficult anyway so this was the goal that I wanted to show the basic use of a class in Python and one final thing that I want to show you is uh, working with files in Python so let's say you want to create a file and you want to either either read or write to that file and in python it is uh, done in this simple way so let's say this is a file object so i'm opening a file under under my user So users, if I, my username, uh, let's say documents and uh, test.txt and I want to open the file in the write mode and then I can write basically anything to that file. Uh, welcome to LNU and what I have to do is simply close the file after I am done so if I execute this um, there should be a file in this location in this name and in that file we should have welcome to LNU so let's check that uh, documents uh, and then you can see that I have this text file and it has this welcome to LNU uh, text that I just wrote and this should be also as simple as that and you can also of course open the files for many other purpose so if you want to read the file just you have to use uh, here R instead of W and then uh, there are also some some changes that you need to make so for example if you want to uh, read a file uh, you just open this same file using R and then instead of F dot write you just simply uh, read uh, line 
and if you use the read line what it will do it will simply read the first line so it will okay it's open the okay it uh, it has it should return in a variable so str so it reads the first line and return or maybe we can simply uh, print that one also so str so basically it will print welcome to LNU string that we already had uh, what we you can do also you can open the same file to add uh, to append so for example in this case a plus so it will open the same file and append something so if I write something in the file let's say with a new line uh, it was welcome to LNU now welcome to IOT course and then I just close it so if I run this one it appended the file and if I want to read the file again so I, I uh, uh, so if I read it again it will again print welcome to LNU because read line method only read just one line and if we want to read all the lines uh, in the file so we add this uh, welcome to IoT course and there was welcome to LNU before so if we want to read all the lines what you need to do is read the first line and then have this while loop or this condition while our uh, str so this is our line that we are reading is not equals to and empty character or end of file basically so while is not equals to end of file or empty character we print all the lines and while we also print the lines we continue reading the next line so basically now if we execute this command it will print both a welcome to LNU and welcome to IOT course and this is the expected outcome that we have so I think uh, that's all what I wanted to show you for this basic uh, Python and also for this Python exercise or for this Python tutorial there will be a short uh, quiz that will be published uh, and participation in this uh, short quiz on Python is also uh, mandatory so details on this quiz will also be published on my module how you can participate uh, on the quiz so I hope uh, you could you you enjoyed this tutorial although it's uh, a bit long but uh, I wanted to show all the basics uh, to get started uh, programming in Python and if you have any questions uh, feel free to slack uh, to discuss on the slack thank you very much